close with humility, humility like that, God changes your personality. And then you enter into a great privilege that you will not know until you start to walk in humility. And then your prayers will even be affected. And then there is promotion for the humble. Listen to me as I share with you from the Bible. Number one, the personality of the humble. The privilege of the humble. The prayers of the humble and promotion for the humble. What's the personality? What's the thing that actually marks out a person that is humble? How can we trace the, the personality traits of the humble in the scriptures? Now we see this uh, personality in the lives of the people that went before us. We've, uh, we've seen uh, people like Abraham, like Moses, like Saul, when he was first anointed. We've seen people like David, like Solomon, like Isaac, like Jeremiah, like, uh, you know, Jesus Christ himself, like Paul the Apostle, and a number of people in the Bible. And from the things they did, you can trace the personality traits of the humble. And the Lord is telling us, giving us all these pictures that what he desires of us to be, what he wants us to be, is that we'll be like these people. He has given us their pictures in the Bible. Let's see this, these pictures and trace the personality of the humble. And as you endeavor to obey the Lord walking humbly with your God, you'll be able to see what is it exactly the Lord is requiring from you. In Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 27. Here, Abraham, who had been called of the Lord, who had responded to the Lord, here he gives um, out his personality in the way he prayed. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. You know the best that Abraham needed to, uh, wanted to say about himself while he was talking with God? Looking at the great privilege he had, looking at the chance and the possibility of prayers in his life, and looking at the great promotion the Lord had given him. Yet while talking with the Lord, he said, Oh Lord, I don't judge myself to be more than dust and ashes. Now you know in those days, uh, dead people were buried in two ways. Or they were, getting, they were taken care of two ways. One, either they were buried and they became dust, or they were burnt and, and they became ashes. And then uh, Abraham was saying, I do not count myself to be any greater than what will become after we are dead, either dust or ashes. And yet, oh Lord, what a great privilege I am talking to you. And you know, is a paradox of the Christian life, of the Christian faith. The lower you go, the higher God brings you. The more humble you express yourself, the more highly the Lord will exalt you. And the more you are able to say, oh Lord, I know if, if, if it were not your grace, I'll be nothing. The more the Lord will draw nearer unto you because he gives grace and more grace and more grace to those who are humble and be, they become humble more and more as they journey on. Walk humbly with thy God. In um, Exodus chapter 3, we're looking at verse 11. Moses said unto God, Who am I? That's the personality, that's the language, that's the meditation, that's the thought, and that's the word, that's the action of a man that is humble. Who am I? Hey, you know the people that are always thinking on how rich they are, how wealthy they are, how great they are, how far above all the other people in the world they are, they do not have a humble personality. The people that are always spending the time to think about who they are in comparison with other people, how highly exalted they are above other people. You know they do not have the personality of the humble but you know, it's the person that says, Oh Lord, why it not for your grace? Why it not for your hand in my life? Why it not for the fact that you called me and you are using me? I'll be nothing, completely nothing. And Moses manifesting this personality trait of the humble said, Who am I that I shall bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now you come to a man called Saul. At the time he was first chosen. When he was called by the Lord to become king, you know, he reacted in a humble way in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 17. 
Samuel now reminding him of what he was before um, this time he said, when thou was little in thine own sight. You see the personality of a, of a humble person, little in their own sight. You know the people that are always singing their praises, blowing their trumpet, measuring their height, telling other people how small they are, but how great they personally are. You know they are not humble. The personality of the humble. The personality is the, of the person that is humble is the one that is all the time putting himself in the right size. Thou was little in thine own sight, and was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee to be king over Israel. And as we look at this uh, young man, David, in Second Samuel, chapter 7, verses 18 and 19, he wanted to build a house for the Lord. But the Lord said, no, David, you won't do it, your son will do it. And then the Lord gave him some promises. And he entered into a greater covenant benefit with the Lord. Now look at the response of David. Well, he didn't say, oh, yes, I merit all that. That's my right. God ought to build a house for me. God ought to make my son to live forever and reign forever. You know, that was not his personality. You know, the personality of David, the personality of the humble. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 18 and 19, Then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I? You remember who said that before? Moses, great, great man, Moses, that led a whole nation out of captivity into the land of liberty. He said, Who am I? And here again we have the king, David. Have you read your Bible and noticed how many times Bible writers mention the name of David? Right from the um, first Samuel, you have uh, the name of David over and over and over. Almost every page you turn in the Old Testament, in the uh, time of the kings and the psalms and the, and the prophets, uh, you have David, David all the time. God exalted that man. You come to the New Testament, to, uh, to Matthew, immediately at the beginning, the first chapter of, uh, of uh, the New Testament, what do you have? David. And as you go into the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find the Apostles mentioning his name over and over and over. Come into the Epistles, again you have the mention of David until the end of the Bible. That David was so important in the sight of the Lord, and yet, you know his personality, the personality of the humble. And again David said, Who am I? O Lord God, and what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? You know what uh, you'll discover? You'll discover if a man is really humble, if he will influence his family, his household to be humble. And you know, Zona leader, if you're humble, your wife will be humble, your children will be humble. If you are proud, they'll take after you. You know what? Uh, you know, all the people in, uh, in the Christian fold, if you are watching them very well, like the husband, like the wife. If the wife is, is uh, proud, you can trace it back to the husband. If the husband is proud, if the wife has not started to be proud, you'll see it in the wife eventually. You know, that is always how it is. But you know, David said, who is me? Who am I? And who is, what is my house? That we should do this unto us. The personality of the humble affects everybody around him. And you find this in the life of Solomon when he came to reign as king. Now the Lord is saying unto this, will I look, the people that tremble at my word, the people that are humble in my sight. And you know, if you are really going to please the Lord, you will walk humbly before him. Humbly before him. As um, a worker in the church, house fellowship leader, IFL house fellowship leader, coordinator, everybody, even general superintendent, you know, I cannot continue to have the grace of God in my life except I keep humble and I maintain the personality of, of humility. And my wife does the same and my children do the same. You know, if a man is used of God and he becomes proud and pompous and he brags and he boasts, is on his way out of the kingdom of God and out of usefulness. So my brother, my sister, the Lord is saying, 
that we must walk humbly in his presence. Walk humbly in his sight. And in Second Samuel chapter 7 that I'm reading to you, in verse 19, This was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. But thou, thou hast spoken also of thy servant sows for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? In First Kings chapter 3. Let's look at Solomon at the beginning of his uh, reign. In First Kings chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 7. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. Now do you find um, leaders in the world, kings in the world, presidents in the world, accepting that openly? Oh no. Do they accept ignorance? Do they accept, I know not how to go out or how to come in? Oh no. Do you know what is happening? The world is coming into the church. And in the church today, you don't find the pastors accepting their ignorance, accepting their littleness, accepting that they know nothing, except by the grace of God. You know, you find the pastors that will brag and, bo and boast and say, you know, how great he is, even without God, even without Christ. How he was born in a royal family. How he sacrificed a lot before even accepting Christian service. And uh, you know, God is so lucky that he has this a pastor as a preacher. God will not be able to use them. But you know, Solomon said, Lord, I'm but a little child. I am but a little child. A king? Oh yes, all the same, a little child. And I know not how to go out or how to come in. You know, it's always uh, my concern that in this church as we Christian people, believers and preachers, every one of us, as we see examples of uh, other pastors and preachers outside uh, that have allowed the spirit of the world to get into them, of pride, of arrogance, of not living a humble life and maintaining a humble personality before the Lord. It's my concern, like a father's concern over children, that you will know that you are born again and that the Lord is calling you, everyone, choir, ushers, everybody, that God has called every one of us to a life of humility. And you know, I watch over myself, I watch over members of my family, and I watch over the people that are near, and I tell them the thing that will make you to be rejected by the Lord is that if you are proud, proud of anything, of your attainment. But you know, if you keep humble before the Lord, humble before the Lord, every one of us, the Lord will use us and continue to use us in a mighty way. But you know, there are preachers out there, out there, and they brag, if you see their example, run away from them. And make sure that you don't copy them. Because all the people that are going to be used of God, and you want to continue to be used of God, you will maintain a personality of humility. I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. Now come to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. Then said I, this is Isaiah talking, a prophet not only of a single church, a prophet to the whole nation. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lakes, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lakes, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You know those prophets of old, they maintain an attitude, the personality of humility. We're not only talking about addressing, we're not only talking about what you put on. I mean, your whole personality, your thoughts about yourself, your meditation about yourself, your actions uh, towards other people, your whole attitude and your whole approach and relationship, that's what we're talking about. And the very heart that you have. You know, your, the way you feel towards God, what God can look at, and will see that you actually entirely maintain that personality of humility. In, Je in um, Jeremiah chapter 1. Reading from verse 4. 
Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now what would you have felt if you had a revelation of the Lord? And it tells you that. You know we have uh, young people who have some little, little dreams. They're going to be used of God. Maybe that is true. But then they become so proud, so arrogant, and they lose the opportunity God wanted to give them. But you know, when Jeremiah heard this, and the Lord said, Before I even formed thee, before you were ever born, I knew you. I could look ahead, and I could see that you fit into a person I would like to ordain as a prophet unto the nation. You know what Jeremiah said? In verse 6, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Is that your attitude? Is that your personality? Coming on to the New Testament, in John chapter 13, John chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God he, and went to God. He rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. That's the work of a servant. But Jesus Christ, our Lord, revealed the personality of humility all through his life. Until the time he was about to go to the cross, he took a towel, and then he bought a bowl of water, and he washed his disciples' feet. It was too much for Peter, and he said, Oh Lord, you will not do that for me. Jesus said, If I do it not for you, you will not have any part in me. And eventually he did it for everybody. And then in verse 13, you call me Master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am, if I then. Zona leader, coordinator, members of the choir, you don't talk like this in other churches, but this is a place where we're getting you ready for heaven. Jesus said, if I then. Your Lord and Master, you see your Lord? Look at the example. And your Master, you see your Master? Look at the example. Don't forget the Bible. You are born again so that you can walk humbly with your God. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example. That ye should do as I have done unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Now, what are we Christians sometimes uh, trying to do? Sometimes, you know, we distinguish ourselves, we separate ourselves from the general body of the believers. You don't want to be treated uh, apart uh, separately. You want to have a, you know, a position and an attitude that is above, far above the congregation. And yet the Lord is saying, what are you doing? Haven't you seen me, your Lord and your Master? What I have done? And you ought to do the same because I've given you an example that you should do as I've done unto you. Are you trying to be greater than the Lord Jesus Christ? The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him, if ye know these things. Happy are ye if you do them. You know, if we are not humble, we'll never be really fully happy, joyful. The joy of the Lord will be far away from us if we are not obeying the Lord in this area of walking humbly with our God. In 1 Corinthians, I'm reading chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles. Paul, we think you are the greatest. Oh yes. 
The rest of the church knew that this man was the greatest. All the theologians since that generation, we all know that this man was the greatest. And even God has given him a ministry that made him the greatest of all the apostles. But you know the personality of the humble? He'll never repeat that same thing, even though it is true. In his heart, this is the way he feels. This is his thought, his meditation, his word, his conversation, his action. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet, I'm not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly, more than them, more than them all. Yet not I, yet not I. But the grace of God which was given me, which was with me. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints. Paul, you mean it? Are you just deceiving also? Know that's how I feel. You know, it's good to know the Lord. Because when you are really great, you don't know you are great. You are not singing your praises. You are not uh, commanding everybody to recognize the fact that you are great. But even openly, you'll write it down for generations after to see how you think about yourself. I am less than the least of all saints. Not just of all apostles, not of all prophets and evangelists, but even of members of the church. And yet this grace is given me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Well, then we have understood what's the personality of a humble person. He never sings his praise. He never shouts his praise. He never blows his trumpet. And he's, uh, you know, always looking for the back seat because he never wants to project himself. No, he never wants to do that. Humility ought to show itself in every action of our lives. Humility must be in the heart, and then it will come out spontaneously as the outflow of life in every act that a man performs. Now, when ought, a, when ought a man to be humble? A man shall walk humbly with the Lord at all times. When his gifts are strong and vigorous, he should be humble. You know, like Gideon that said, I'm just uh, from a poor family. When the angel said, Go in this thy might. He said, no, I have no might. I'm, the, I'm a poor person from a poor family. So when your gifts are strong and vigorous, work humbly. When you have a great deal of work and responsibility to do, what are we to do? Work humbly. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17 verse 10, After you have done all these things, you just say, We are unprofitable servants. So then, when your responsibilities are great and your works are great, remember, walk humbly with thy God. When men praise and admire you, what are you to do? You walk humbly with the Lord. In Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar told him, but then he had forgotten the dream and he didn't know the interpretation and he was afraid of what uh, will come out of it. And so he got all the people around him together to help him. But they couldn't help. And he decided or threatened he was going to kill them, destroy them. But you know, eventually Daniel uh, told uh, Ariok and said, Why is uh, the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok uh, made, the, uh, made the thing known unto Daniel. And Daniel said, Don't worry about that. I'll ask the Lord. And then eventually he went in the night and he asked the Lord. And the Lord gave him a night vision. And now he had seen this revelation that nobody in the whole nation could see. Obviously this man had the talents and gifts and revelation. Obviously Nebuchadnezzar will admire this man and praise this man. But you know what Daniel said in Daniel chapter 2 verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. Daniel said, oh no, I'm not a great person, I'm just a humble fellow, 
and my personality is that even when you're admiring me and you're praising me, I still want to tell you there is nothing in me greater than in any other person. God is just using me, choosing me to be an instrument. That's a humble fellow. And you see, when others envy you and compete with you, what are you to do? Are you to say, I'll prove to them? No, that will be pride, my brother, my sister, members of the choir. I'll prove that I can do that thing better than that other fellow. No, that will be pride. What's the personality of a humble person? Even when others envy you, when others compete with you, walk humbly with thy God. Then when the temptation is there to seek big places, what are you to do? Walk humbly with thy God in Jeremiah chapter 45. Jeremiah chapter 45, verse 5. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. So when the temptation is there to seek a big place for yourself, seek them not. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, reading from verse 7, all through to verse 11, that when you are brought or when you are invited, to a feast, do not seek the chief or the highest room. But when thou art bidding of any man to a wedding, in verse 8, sit not in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidding of him. In verse 10, but when thou art bidding, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship or praise, legitimate praise, in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself, himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And when you are under great trials, you are again to walk humbly with your God. When your brethren think that you are wrong, you have to walk humbly with your God. And when you have received miracles and mercies from the Lord, you have to remember to walk humbly with thy God. In um, Genesis chapter 32, verse 10, here is Jacob responding to the miracles of supply, the miracles of mercy that the Lord had given him. And again, it shows us the humility of this man. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant for with my staff I passed over this Jordan and now I am become two bands now you have seen from the Bible from the Word of God that it's important that we keep not just an outward form of humility not just an outward appearance of humility, but a personality that goes through into our thoughts, into our imaginations, into our meditations, into our words, into our conversation, into our actions. A personality of humility. Reading about Spurgeon. Now Spurgeon was a preacher of the last century, of about uh, more than 100 years ago. But you know Spurgeon became a well-known preacher even from the age of about 20 because uh, from the age of about 20, he was preaching to large crowds of people before he ever got married. And uh, he maintained such a dynamic uh, ministry of evangelizing with thousands of people. In about a message he preached, I think, in 1876, he was talking to the congregation and he said, Now we thank the Lord here that uh, you are uh, up to 5,600 members in the congregation. And you know, those years, more than a hundred years ago, a preacher talking like that, having such a large congregation within the church, that was very, very large. And yet, you know, he maintained a personality of humility. Somebody said to him, you must stand up for your dignity. Spurgeon replied, I lost my dignity a long time ago. And I never thought it worthwhile to look for it again. And then he also said, if you have no dignity of character, any other dignity is a piece of rag. And that uh, man's podium was mightily used of God 
He wrote so many books. He wrote, uh, in fact, uh, you know, so many sermons he wrote down. And you just uh, many times to go to the bookshop that uh, stock his books and you book upon book. He wrote about the, uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, parts of every part of the Bible. Daily reading, devotional reading, and book of the Psalms, everything. And yet, that was a humble man. You know, if those who walk with the Lord, in the ages past, generations past, if they were humble, we too were to maintain the same walk with the Lord. Now the privilege of the humble. You've seen the personality. was a privilege? In Micah chapter 6 and in verse 8. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. The privilege you have when you are humble is you'll be able to walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. In James chapter 4, reading from verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Not his age. He'll give grace. That's a great privilege we have. In verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. That's the privilege we miss when we are not humble. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. And the best things of the world, and the things which are despised, as God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. The privilege we have is that the more humble we become, the more he's able to use us, the more he's able to use our lives and ministries and messages to confound the mighty. Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 2 to verse 4. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, have a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of character, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. What a great privilege. Now the prayers of the humble. In Psalm 9 verse 12. Psalm 9 verse 12. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. You know some ministers of the gospel, I mean many of these evangelists outside, they feel that their ministries will grow when they come proud. They feel that a God will make them known when they are deliberately proud. But you know it says, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. You know the lower you go, as I've told you, the higher the Lord will bring you. The greater, uh, the, greater the effectiveness of your prayers will be. And then in um, Psalm 10 verse 17, Lord, thou hast set the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear. When you are humble, he makes himself to hear your prayers. And your desires are known to him when you are humble. In Psalm 138 and verse 6. Psalm 138 and verse 6. Though the Lord be high, yet he has respect unto the lowly. But the proud in knoweth are far off. In Psalm 66 and verse 2. For all those things as my hand made, and all those things have been, says the Lord, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. You know, the Lord has no place in his heart or in his kingdom for those 
So just say, toss the word of God aside. And he say, well, even though the Bible talks about humility, I'm not going to accept all that. I want to be a lanky fellow. I want to be a person that is, you know, uh, really bold. And I'm going to blow my trumpet. If I don't blow my trumpet, it will get lost. But you know, God has no chance. He has no place for such people in his kingdom. But for those who will hear the word of God and tremble at the word of God, the men and the women and everybody. And you know from the example of Jesus, if anybody ought to be humble, the higher we go in Christian service, I believe with all my heart, the more humble we ought to be. Because you know, as a young convert, we actually don't understand about humility very well. You know, we all, we just uh, think we're humble if we're walking step by step and looking down and uh, we bob our head, our ear, and it goes down a little and then we don't use chain or we don't use all this jewelry and we dress in a moderate way and we're going gently and gently. The new convert thinks that that is humility. But you know, the more you read the Bible, the more you know God, the more you serve God, and the more you are exposed to opportunities of preaching the gospel and knowing the Lord, and you get into greater areas of usefulness. If you are really a real child of God, if you are really in fellowship with the Lord, the more you go in Christian service, the more humble it takes you. And the more you know the Lord, the more you know yourself that you are nothing without the grace of God. But you know, you find some people that are humble just in the first two years of their Christian service or Christian life. And then after that, four years after that, five years after that, or ten years after that, they become so proud. You know, the Lord has no place for such people. But my brothers, my sisters, let's take the word of God and walk humbly before the Lord. Waste your God. And then will your prayers be important in His sight. Now, promotion for the humble. In Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8 all through to verse 11. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause. We doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields to set up on high those that below and that those that mourn may be exalted to safety eventually and finally there is promotion for the humble you promote yourself and the lord brings you down but you are lowly and you are gentle and you are humble and you bring down yourself and the lord brings you all that's his method that's the principle of his kingdom. And uh, that is his principle of the qualification he's looking for in the people he uses the most. In uh, Proverbs, I'm reading chapter, chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And then in Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 23, we're looking at verse 12. Here are the words of Jesus Christ himself, whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You know, from all that we have studied, the Lord is going to give the power, the privilege, the promotion to the people that are humble. To the people that know that without the Lord, they themselves are nothing. But what will God do for the proud? Well, you see, you see here, I said, I will resist the proud. One of the people that were proud in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar, well, he, had, he was a king, he had a kingdom, he was an emperor, he had an empire, and he had many servants under him, and he had great authority. But you know, even when a man has that, he should still understand all these things came just by the provision of the Lord, but he didn't realize that. And we're told in Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, 
from verse 28. Daniel chapter 4 from verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? You see that? That's different from what I've been reading to you about Abraham, about Moses, about David, about Solomon, about, about uh, Jeremiah, about Isaiah, about Paul, about Jesus Christ himself. This is so different. He looked at the work he has done. And from the thoughts of his heart, meditation of his heart, imagination of his heart, all to the words and the action and the attitude of his life, he said, this is Babylon. Great Babylon that are built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, thy kingdom is departed from thee. You see the judgment for the proud? And it shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know the, that the Most High rulers in the kingdom of men, and giveth thee to whomsoever he will. Not to the proud, to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the same fulfilled on Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till the ears of it, till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And eventually he came back into humility. The Lord restored him, and he was never proud after that. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But there came one, uh, they came with one accord to him, and having made blasters, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon his set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. You know, be careful when people give you grace or give you praise and glory. Pass it on to God. Be humble. And then we're told in verse 23, Immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. You know, in uh, your Christian life, as a wife, as a husband, as a Christian worker, as a church member, you need to be humble. The Lord is looking for humility. Deeper humility, more measurable humility in our lives, in our attitudes, in our words, in our conversation, in our relationship and in, in relation and interpersonal relationship with one another. Walk humbly with thy Lord. If you walk humbly, there is promotion. If you walk with pride, there is punishment. Rise up and let us pray. The Lord has given us the call. Walk humbly before me. Don't copy other people that you've seen outside who don't have the grace of God in their lives. Be very careful. Stay humble. House fellowship leader, member of the church, sister, brother, wife, husband. A pride is coming back into your life. Check it up. Moses was dynamic and useful, yet humble. Abraham was dynamic and useful, yet humble. David was not a weak king. Dynamic king, yet humble. Walk humbly with the Lord your God. 
Jesus was a miracle worker, a mighty preacher, a person that rocked the whole nation, and he said, we have never seen it like this before. His ministry was dead, was endeared in the hearts of the people, yet humble. And Paul was useful above all the other apostles, yet humble. We can be useful, but let's remain humble. Tremble at the word of God. Otherwise, you might force the Lord to reject you and forsake you. He receives the proud. He gives grace only to the humble. Children, obey the voice of the Lord, be humble. Zona leaders, everybody, you are not greater than Jesus. If I, your Lord and Master, have done that, I'll show you an example. Maintain a personality of humility. And the greater you do for the Lord, the more carefully you watch that you maintain that personality of humility. God will cast out the proud. He will. They may be praised in the sight of men. They may look successful in the sight of men. God will resist the proud. And the meek shall inherit the earth. Walk humbly before thy God. Once again, we glorify your name for all you have been talking to us since last week. We thank you, Lord, because of your message you have sent to us once again as a worker in your fired. Father, we pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Ability to obey your word. Ability to let this work continue to dwell in our hearts. He will give to us in Jesus' name. There's one prayer I always pray. Whenever I come to church, it's God, what do you want to speak to me? Not what you want to speak to somebody else. I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. As God has spoken to every one of us this morning, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, we will obey the word for ourselves and no, not for other people in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, by the time we shall, as we are living here, we know you have spoken to us already. Let us be fruitful. Father, the wages of this message is to see it in our life, go back home, listen to it again, and see that there's a production through it in our attitude, in our character. In everything we are going to do, and God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us be seated. I welcome every one of us to today's service, and then I want to appreciate the yesterday workers meeting, and it's like uh, Holy Spirit spoken to Kefas family. We have reserved that seat for. <laughs> I don't know what chief to you there. I pray that God is going to be with you in Jesus' name. We have decided that the children will be staying at the back, and then the any that the children will be staying at the back, not because of any other thing. They are seizing our attention, and God is going to help us in Jesus' name. 
and then I think that uh, we can see it today that there is a little bit of sanity and the grace of the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus name not because of any other thing is for when we come to the church we want to know that we eh? it's cold okay eh. we we want to know that uh, we come to the church and then any example wherever we go is i want to thank my elder too it's not easy <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is where in Jesus' name. God will help. But you know that, Pastor, that I always sit in the front. But many of us know that. When you go to the church in DC, where Pastor that does it? In the front. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God will help us in Jesus' name. It's just out of bringing sanity to the house of the Lord. I welcome everyone, of course, once again to the to this service. And that does not mean become a some be <laughs> like what i did for brazil today <laughs> so anytime we say that oh the only bad bad you just be for children when anytime we see that does uh, not see the brazil then we should be sitting there then there's no seat <laughs> there as you know the union becomes so be it just uh, they just out of love out of trying and god is going to help us in jesus name. but let us reserve this bad seats for the children it's well in Jesus' name. Once again, I welcome everyone of us to the today's service. I want to appreciate everyone of you for prompt and the obedience to the word of the Lord and allow the word of the Lord to touch us. That's what makes different life different. I don't know if I told you this story. There was a day I went to I went to church with a visitor, and by the time we finished the service. Everybody was just going, you know, us, uh, you know, anything. And then the person said, ah, why everybody is doing that? And I said, can you remember all the topic, everything you have learned? He said, no, I can't, I don't think, what, I don't think that's what I said. But I want to tell him, no, do you, can you remember all what you have done? He said, yes. That's why after the church service in Deeper Life, no meeting, nothing. Just go home so that the word, the word of the Lord will dwell in us. And that's why the deeper life of old, they are very, very fruitful. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going back to the old religion. Almighty God is going to help everyone of us in Jesus' name. Once again, with sincerity of mind, I appreciate everyone of us. Uh, there's something we forget in workers' meeting yesterday, and I want us to trash it now. The national uh, prayer meeting i send the email to every one of us they they, they they give us from third to the sixth third five i think monday is third tuesday four then friday and uh, thursday five then six so what time are we going to be available the Monday is our night VG. So I'm thinking that I should lead the first one. The first it's 30, 30 minutes. I should lead the first 30 minutes. In the sense that I've, I've been used to it. And I know what they are going to do. Then my wife will go to work on the goes to work on Tuesday. So she should lead the second 30 minutes. So I don't know the plan of Brian Benjamin. What's your schedule June third to sixth. It's third Saturday. That's in f that's me five to uh, 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 you'll be working all those so that's me you can't love elite. Brad Stephen Brad Stephen will maybe on Tuesday. I know is uh, is are you thinking of the phone? Uh, it's from the headquarters. It's my headquarters. It's why if nobody is going to lead, that's me. We, uh, uh, no, I've seen your prayer. I've seen. Then who is going to lead all those day? It's not possible because all of it is because we have not been joining. All it's not one person that is leading every time. No, you need to lead. 
bro either wednesday i can give you tuesday i can let you escape tuesday so that you will see but wednesday if i'm not be leading prayer in the church i will know that you have not been leading the prayer the church. you cannot lead it but i know you can lead it so t- please on t- i will give you tuesday escape tuesday lead t- uh, wednesday just after just 30 minutes if it's remain if it involves praying if you involve fasting if it was to lead the whole usa to god please go and do it go and we do it god is going to help you in jesus name so i on that monday monday fifth then nine to ten mm-hmm. that monday i will lead the first one then my wife will lead the second one uh tuesday i will find solution to it tuesday i will find solutions to it wednesday uh but Stephen, please ready to lead 30 minutes then where's the the second 30 minutes you will find solutions to it. please i'm not forcing you but please it's just your responsibility that god has assigned to you god will help you in jesus name it's not the matter i'm forcing you because i know it's what you can do so uh where's the uh where's the i will find solution to you so monday is out half of tuesday half of wednesday is out so we have thursday so uh, we have tuesday to sort out and then we have half of wednesday to us and then we have the whole thursday to sort out and we lead the last thursday too uh wednesday will have been very good for me wednesday will have been very good for me Yes, calling to DC line. Calling to DC line. Every day, every day, from Monday to Thursday. From Monday to Thursday. But we we have been used to it, so. No, not everybody. They 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 they, assign, they that they have given us. I'm very sorry that they didn't tell us. They have given us the schedule since January that we are going to lead in June. To be sincere, let us be sincere. You know, I, that was the time uh, the children are going to go into the bed. That's the time I need to be preparing for work. I try all work can do to avoid it. It's not, it's not acceptable. To let you know how hard it is for me. That's, that's I need to be, you know, I, I come back from school I take care of the children from three then from three nine i'll be preparing for the bed so that i can go to work by 10 45 or 11 to let you know how difficult it is for me but i try all what i could do it is not acceptable so there's nothing i can do we have learned about leadership we have done everything so go where person jesus name uh, there's another thing I see. I try to go and do the 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 picture of Saint now. I took the picture, but maybe I and my wife will go there today. I saw some flower that they they are bidding for in my place of work. Like maybe for dressing. I don't know. If maybe if my wife, my I and my wife go there this afternoon before we went. We go for evangelism. I will encourage us so that we leave early. If something we are going to buy, it may maybe we bid for them. It's all so this kind of flower. This uh, hey, but small, small one that we can use to dress the church. There's still some wall, something. We will just if it's something that is not going to cost us money, that is you can see how we talk to So those things I wanted to discuss in focus meeting yesterday. I couldn't do it. So uh, back to the normal system. Please do not forget the Bible study tomorrow, and the Almighty God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Also on Thursday, do not forget our prayer meeting. The prayer meeting has been so big; the attendance has been becoming so low, so low. But the grace of the Lord will continue to be sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. 
for the account i don't need to mention this but some of these things if i don't mention it now i forget i forget for the uh account it's like the the this account of three thousand dollars is becoming it has become something like two thousand dollars and then the our the the saving the 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 credit card has become 135 i think i look at it this morning and from one thousand dollars and then the one of three thousand we spend on the cars has become something like two thousand dollars within that range uh, but this is what thing we need to trust yesterday because because i forgot oh god god we continue to help us in jesus name i want to appreciate everyone and then especially our mother that traveled to togo i think it was the one that deposits about 300 dollars to clear that we used to clear the saving account oh my there's a little bit improvement in our account this month God is going to continue to help us in Jesus name. By the time, by the power and the blood of Jesus, I don't know how to say this in English. In my language, they will say your hand will not go to the depth of your pocket. You know when money is not there, <laughs> the, the hand will turn. <laughs> so Almighty God will help us in Jesus name, and the grace of the Lord will continue to be with everyone of us. Uh, another thing I want us to take note: the pastor that that doesn't like us to make complaint is confession. Confession, you know, I've been this one. If I did mistake on the on the prayer or something, I did not do mistake on this. It has been there every Sunday. Please take note of the convention and all the meeting. Like now, they are in youth camp. All this uh, Chandra is supposed to go with his age. It is just out of negligence uh, from me, from the church, and of course all this one. And God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. As I told Lord, there's no father that sees his son that will not be happy. We want to feel that ah, I have children. Yeah. So let us do the national convention and keep praying for me for pastoral retreat. No matter what the case may be, all those things I need to be attending. And then it's becoming that okay, if you don't want to listen to us, we leave you alone. When it's becoming children, you will kill yourself. I mean, children don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. When you become children, don't kill yourself. I mean, child, don't kill me. Don't kill me. You become child, don't kill yourself. Know that the child need to be careful. But all God is going to God is going to continue to help us. And by the power and the blood of Jesus, power to do all these things, God will give to us in Jesus' name. I know everybody's situation, and he too he knows, but it's still his will that he see us, he see our presence in the national program. God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. I don't think there's any other thing once again. I want to appreciate everyone. Oh, the gift God give me is appreciation. I want to appreciate everyone of us for all our contribution. Not because of this world, but we, we are making our way to the kingdom of God smooth. Imagine you are not here for me. Imagine I'm not here for you. Imagine all this kind of message we have been listening to. So Almighty God will continue to help everyone of us in Jesus' name. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, more than uh, when we say the fruit of our labor sometimes, I don't normally want to say the prayer. Because sometimes <laughs> what you think that you have done good to other people is negative. <laughs> so when you say you are going to eat the fruit of your labor sometimes, but it's a very good prayer but by the power and the blood of jesus christ i only pray a prayer god will justify us in jesus name and the grace of the lord will continue to be sufficient for everyone for us in jesus name so we are going for evangelism today as we said yesterday and then in downtown god will prepare us and god will go along with us in the name of jesus christ if there's any other thing the cd is available i think the only one that is not that i've done it the only one that is not danced here is the this one i've not put them into envelope i was just i quickly recorded it and then but maybe by tomorrow it will be available fully in jesus name. but all other things especially on marriage the uh the God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. If there's any other thing that uh, we let us know, let us bring our title.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of the grace you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, because I can be proud of it. I can be bored of it because of humility you have given to everyone in this church. I thank you, Lord, because you remind us once again that we have been selected, we have been elected to be a sample of you in this world. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the special grace you are giving to every one of us by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not throw it away in Jesus' name. Lord, as we said yesterday, the Christian journey is difficult. If not because it's difficult, we won't be here. We will have been whereby the pastor said we are going to be recognized, whereby people are going to be praising us. But many of us have decided that I will rather be where I'm not recognized, but I will lead people to the kingdom of God, and people will lead me to the kingdom of God than be where there is no God. Pray, Almighty God, I pray, you are going to justify us in Jesus' name, and your grace is going to be sufficient to us. Continue to uplift us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. I thank you, Lord, because of the observation. I thank you, Lord, because how we take ourselves into correction. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, because you even let us able to discipline the children. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus. We are doing all these things. You will count it in favor of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord and answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us continue to be in the mood of prayer. Call upon the name of the Lord. Father, help me, Lord. Let your grace be sufficient for me. Pray for every leaders. Is I know all what all every one of you have done, not because of whom you are, not because of what you want to be, but just because of grace of God. I pray that Almighty God is going to continue help every one of us in Jesus' name. My dear brother, my dear sister, you will not do anything. That's why we call it Deeper Life Bible Church. Why the word of the law is being obeyed? Why the word of the law is being preached? Lord, we fulfill your destiny, it will fulfill my destiny. Call upon the name of the Lord. Now by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. More than this, God is going to uplift every one of us in Jesus' name. All the dream. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to achieve it in Jesus' name. I pray God will look at every contribution we have done. And a million fold, by the power in his blood, he will reward us in Jesus' name. I know it is challenging, but it's a Christian journey. It's a Christian journey. I'm looking at that day. By the grace of the Lord, you will take your reward. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not look back in Jesus' name. I will not look back in Jesus' name. The joy of salvation of you, of other people, will continue to be your strength in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, wherever it may be, God will wipe away our tears. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, is it sitting? It's praise and worship. You 
Shayanu is the God of miracles, the God of wonders, the God that can do all things. He's a great God. Worship Him, worship Him, glorify Him, exalt Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready to sing and dance for God?
If everybody is saying I'm saying, I am saying you're saying, fly away. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. I too, I will not miss it in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the first time I ever thought of calling the um, our church in Georgia to thank them for the wonderful thing they are doing. And I think I will do that today. God will continue to help them. The grace of the Lord will continue to be with the choirs there in the name of Jesus Christ. By the time in the Lord, by the time power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they have led other people to kingdom of God. They will not miss it in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will keep everyone of us. Then it's time for Bible reading. We shall read from the book of Acts, chapter 3. Book of Acts, chapter 3. Oh, chapter 4. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Please, which act do we read last time? I think chapter 3. That's why I'm a little bit confused. It should be. You know, it's chapter 2, so it's chapter 3. All oh, this thing I need to know, I'm very sorry. Uh, I can always be the one that correct. Anytime I. Okay, so we are going to chapter 3, I'm correct. Three. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. 
And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers, but those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets, from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. God bless his word and our heart in Jesus' name. We shall listen to choir song.
Well, I'm taking back, I'm taking back everything that the devil got from me. Well, I'm taking back, I'm taking back everything that the devil got from me. Taking back my song, my song, my dance, my dance, my joy, my joy, my peace. I'm taking back, I'm taking back everything that the devil got from me. Well, I'm taking back, I'm taking back. Everything that the devil stole from me, I'm taking back. I'm taking back everything that the devil stole from me. Give me back my soul, my soul, my soul, my, 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 my joy, my peace. I'm taking back. I'm taking back everything that the devil stole from me. Now one day, old King David came home to a city called Ziklag. While he was gone, the enemy came and stole everything he had. But you see, David encouraged himself in the Lord. He made up in his mind that I'm on my way down to his cave, and I'm taking what's rightfully mine. Devil, I'm taking back everything that the devil stole from me. But I'm taking back, I'm taking back everything that the devil stole from me.
Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. The scripture says that uh, you spare the uh, the rod and spoil the child. So I'm trying not to spare the microphone and spoil the message of today. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. Lord in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to your presence. Father, we heard from the song. We're taking our future back. We are telling the devil that he will never take away our future. He will never even touch us because he's far away from us. Christ died and Lord, he rose back again. For him, coming back from the death, he gave us our future back. We claimed it yesterday. We claim it right from the day we were born. We claim it today and we claim it forevermore. For us, for our family, from generation to generation. Father, we'll claim it. Lord in heaven, we heard about humility this morning. Father, we've heard from Abraham, Saul, David, Paul, Father, even to your son Jesus, who said, not my will, but let their will be done. Father, we saw how he took the toll from himself and cleaned the feet of his disciple. We heard this morning, Father, Lord, help us to be humble. Father, for you say, he who is humble, you exalt. And he or she who exalted themselves, they'll be humble. Father God in heaven, who humble ourselves this morning in your presence. Lord, as we're going to listen to this message, let your peace reign in our hearts. That Father will understand. Father, talk to us individually. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may all be seated. Um, so when I was thinking about the message for, for today, I had two things in mind. Uh, one of them was they're very close to one another. One of them was, when you're pushed to the edge, how do you react? When you're ticked off, how do you react? Do you seek the face of the Lord, or do you seek your own face when you react, when you're ticked off? by someone on the street, by your family members, by your spouse, by your children. When at that point when you have the rage, you're completely upset and very angry, how do you react? The second message that I thought about is how to be a good disciple and minister of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are not too far away from one another. But as the Lord will put it in my heart, is to talk about how to be a good disciple and minister of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll talk about when you are ticked to the edge some other time. A lot of times you know, I pray and I prepare for messages and whichever one the Lord tells me, to give that's the one that I share with you and it so coincidentally ties into the message that we heard this morning in fact the chapter and verse I'm going to read were read this morning amen it's not a coincidence it's not by chance so I'll first read from first Peter chapter 5 verse 5 that wasn't prepared for my sermon our Simon is going to be from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16 to 27. If you listen carefully, we read from it this morning. But I want us to recap from what we heard this morning. The power of humility. How humility allowed Moses to lead a nation out of captivity. How to be a disciple and minister for our Lord Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5. 
First Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says, and I read from the King James Version, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder, ye, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. How to be a great minister and evangelist for our Lord Jesus Christ. As we have read, God gives grace to all that are humble. How to be a minister for Christ. Because Moses was humble, he became a great disciple for God. Because David was humble himself, he became a great disciple of Christ. Moses passed on the message of God to the children of Israel. Because he said, who am I? He was humble. Paul was humble from the beginning. Saul was humble from the beginning. He became king of Israel. David himself humbled himself. But we'll draw our example from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Paul. You know, a lot of people have likened me to Paul the Apostle. And I say, what, what an honor to be likened to, I would say, one of the greatest disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Probably because of the fact that those people who have read the work of Paul and have looked at the life of Paul. I want us to look at why Paul was successful as a minister of God. And if you draw from it, if you draw from Paul, how he led his life, how he shared the gospel with us, you become a great disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ and you be a successful minister and evangelist for God. Abraham said, who am I? Do you say, who am I? How humble are you? Do you think that you can lead a whole nation out of captivity? Can you? The only way that you can be able to lead a nation out of captivity is if you become a successful minister of God. A leader is somebody who takes people along with them. That's who a leader is. When I say a leader and a successful minister for God, I am not saying that when you have a title of pastor or such the scriptures teacher or house fellowship leader, no. What I'm referring to is being when you're a child of God, you are a minister of God. Be not deceived. When you become born again, you become an evangelist and a minister for God because that is what you're, you're ministering. You are disseminating the word of God to all. Be not deceived and think that, well, I'm just a church member. No. You are a minister in the eyes of God. Don't think about titles. Who am I? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's see how Paul became successful. He said, let's start from verse 14. He said, even so had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Amen? So he's saying that um, if you're a farming, right, if you're a farmer and um, you cultivate corn or peanuts or whatever you cultivate, you need to live by it so that people will know. You make an example to say the peanuts that I'm growing, I'm eating my peanuts because they're so good, I have to live by it. It's saying that when you preach the word of God, 
When you're a minister of God, when you become born again, everybody preaches. Don't be deceived and think that, well, because you don't stand before the puppy, that you are not a preacher. When you stand before that person and you share the word of God, you are preaching. Amen? You are a preacher and you are a minister of God. When you stand in the store, in the grocery store, in the market, and you are sharing the word of God, you have become a preacher and a minister of God. Be not deceived. And you have to live by it. That's what Paul is saying. First and foremost, when you share the gospel of God, you have to live by the same gospel. That is why Paul was a successful minister. He led by example. He lived by what he preached. Are you living by what you share with other people? Are you? Are you? And then he said, but I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things. Verse 15. That it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. Amen. He is saying that, look, I am proud of the gospel that I'm preaching. I am living by the same word. If I cannot live by that word of God, it is better that I die. What a commitment. And that is why he was successful. You know, when you're committed to something, it becomes a success. If you are a child of God, if you are not committed, Paul was committed to preaching the word of God. That is why he became a successful minister. If you are not committed, you will never be a successful minister. All the people who are successful, be it in business or their work, is because they've been committed. When I started, when I started work as a scientist, I was committed. I was committed, dedicated to my work. I drew a line. You know, as a graduate student, I go from class to church to work. So class, church to work, and once in a while we go play badminton in between work. When we get very tired and weary, we go to play badminton for an hour and we take a shower and we get back. We were committed to the work and committed to the fact that I set a timeline for myself. Have you set a timeline for yourself? Paul, at the end, Paul said that I have fought the good faith. I have finished mine. Have you, can you today tell yourself that I have fought the good fight of faith? Can you say today that you're fighting the good fight of faith? Can you? If you are not, how can you be a successful minister? That is why Paul was successful. He says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, war is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He is saying that it's necessary. It's put upon him. He has to preach the gospel. Why Paul was successful? He has to. He's laying a foundation and example to everyone. He is saying that it's laid unto me. I have to. I have no choice. I have compelled myself. And that is why Paul was a successful minister of God. Is that what you tell yourself every day? Are you living your life by example? By the same example that you have laid out for others. For if I do these things willingly, I'm reading from verse 17, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. He is saying that, look, I'm looking up to heaven. I am not being compelled by anyone. You know, when I, when I stood here the last time and we heard about giving to the Lord, I said one thing is that two things. I said two laws that Christ said, the greatest commandment. He said, love thy God, love thy Lord thy God 
and love your neighbor as yourself. And also, it's, the Lord said, if you love me, you follow my commandments. So if you're a child of God, you don't even need to be compelled. You be a cheerful giver. You don't need to be compelled and forced by anyone. You be a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. The reason why a cheerful, because he wants that in your heart of heart. Because if you are not giving to him cheerfully, you are giving grudgingly. There is no need for you to give. If you are giving your time to God and you are whining and complaining, there is no need to give your time to God. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Even if I go to bed one hour before the time of church, I have to wake up. I don't grumble to say, well, you know, I just slept one hour, so I'm not coming to church. Nobody needs to tell me. Nobody needs to compel me to come to the house of God. Because the Lord says we should be living sacrifice. I've made myself a living sacrifice unto the Lord. How to be a great minister of God. So that you, ca you don't need to be compelled. If you are being compelled by someone to follow the Lord or to give unto the Lord or to come to the house of the Lord, then you need to re-examine yourself. You can never be a great minister because you are not be living by the word of the Lord like Paul. Verse 18, what is my reward then? If you are being compelled, what is your reward? You know, if I have to tell you to pray, you know, we get tired. Think about it. You have a, your son or your daughter. You know, I say, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. At one point, you get very tired and exhausted. It's humanly. Why? What is my reward? If I have to be compelled to come here and worship, what is my reward? Paul was living by example. That is why he was one of the greatest apostles of Christ. Do you want to be one of the greatest apostles of Christ? It is possible. He said, what is my reward then? What is your reward? I want you to meditate on this question. What is your reward? If you are being compelled to worship God, what is your reward? There is no reward. You know, it's very simple because I look at following Christ as examples have been given to here uh, to us on earth. Let's think about it that, you know, you're going on the street. The other day, uh, we came out of the store and an old lady fell. And my wife was showing me that somebody who fell, that was, can we see what's going on? She understands that I work in the healthcare and I can help. So we drove past a little bit. We saw that the lady was doing okay. So we just drove away. I wasn't being compelled. But moved. Christ wants us to all be moved by his word, by his by compassion. We are supposed to be moved so that we can follow him. But when you're compelled, you meet somebody on the street and you look at the person, you have compassion. We've seen how the disciple they say, Oh Christ Himself, moved by compassion. You know, moved by compassion. They heal, they gave. You know, as you're on the street or in the store, in the church, you're moved by compassion. You're not being compelled by anyone. You give. That is how to be a successful minister in the house of the Lord. That is why Paul was successful. If you want to be successful, if you have to be successful, you have to lead by example. I'll soon get to the heart of the message. This is just running around the bush that we say. I'll go to the heart of the message. What is my reward? Then verily, that's verse 18. That, so we're reading 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So we're on verse 18 now. What is my reward? Then verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. 
that I abuse not my power in the gospel. He's saying he's preaching the word of God. Nobody's paying him. Nobody's paying him. I don't have to be paid. I don't want to be charged. And he said, because I have power, I'm not abusing my powers. Amen. You are elevated in the house of the Lord when you have the spirit of God in you. You are not abusing. We've seen with Christ himself, he cleaned the feet of his disciples. So the same Paul is saying, I'm not abusing my power because... I have power from God because I'm one of the greatest apostles. I can abuse my, I can send people everywhere, do whatever I want. But he's saying, I am not abusing that power. And he says, I'm charging no one for the gospel. If you want to be a successful minister of the Lord, you have to live by example. You are not compelled. You don't have to be paid to do the word of God. And neither do you abuse your power. If you don't know it, when you're a minister of God, you're given power because he says, because you're my sons and daughters, he says, I've given power unto you to trample against upon serpents. You've been given power. You can uproot mountains. You can heal. You can cast out demons. So you have powers. You have powers. Are you abusing the power that your father has given to you? And listen, he says, For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servants unto all, that I might gain the more. This is the heart of the message. This is where you need to listen attentively, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. So for though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I may gain them, uh, gain them more. What is Paul doing? Paul is putting himself in the shoes of everyone. If you want to be a great minister of the Lord, and win souls, and deliver nations from bondage, you have to live by examples, and you have to put yourself in other people's shoes. You know, let's say you're an, you know, you're an accountant. You rise through the rank. So you start from the table, you start working, and you rise through the ranks. So when you become a manager or a supervisor, you understand everything. You know how things work. 